hello and welcome to this tutorial so in this tutorial we are going to learn how and why we uh, can only we can use uh, an open loop uh, control strategy for a photovoltaic uh, microinverter based on a flyback topology so let me first draw the topology here ok let me make, a, make this mistake so we have uh, this uh, photovoltaic panel that is connected with a switch in this flyback uh, topology uh, we have normally we have uh, a winding which is center tab we can either use a center tab winding or we can use uh, the topology with the two secondaries connected in a different fashion we have explained it earlier so let us uh, explain how we can control this fly flyback inverter connected to a grid So this is our V grid and this is our uh, voltage here is will be our VPV and the current that flows through here is the IPV. So we have explained its function earlier I am not going to discuss it. Uh, what is the, inten the intention the basic intention of this tutorial is to see how we can control these switches SP uh, and these SAC and SC, SACN so let us call it SACP and call it SACN now normally you can have these switches switched at a particular line frequency according to this VG it could be switched at the line frequency of 50 Hertz or of 60 Hertz uh, whatever frequency you are having with your grid the control of this SP is very interesting uh, we have uh, an MPPT block here that gives us the duty cycle this is our MPPT block. This MPPT block requires to measure IPV and the VPV. Whatever algorithm you are having here, either the P&O or the incremental conductor for whatever you have designed, you have to multiply this with the rectified, rectified waveform from the grid. So this is your VG here. And this is then compared with the a high frequency triangular waveform to produce PW impulses you know like this and this goes to the SP where this is the SP now we have to see this is an open loop control here we have not used any you know control loop the question is why we can use an open loop system uh, to control the primary side switch of a flyback inverter you know in order to do this we have to uh, you know we have to uh, assume that there is no losses in this uh, uh, devices all the passive as well as the active elements are ideal in that case we can assume that VPV into IPV the product of the power coming from the photovoltaic source is equal to the uh, VRMS into the RIRMS that is the input is equal to, power, uh, to the output so we don't have any losses in all the elements including this transformer this diode and these switches and this filter inductances moreover we have to we, we know that i primary which is the primary current that flows through here if this is the uh, dot topology here this ipv let us call it here this is ipv this let me call it i primary i primary into vpv that is equal to IG into VG which is the this is the grid current and this is the grid voltage that is equal to uh, 2 times VRMS into IRMS into sine square of omega t this is from you know general basic uh, theory now here in this equation this let us call this equation number 1 and let us call it equation number 2 in this equation let me change the color of the pen this is the DC value which, which is coming from the photovoltaic panel and RMS values represents the grid voltage and the current and this I primary which is this uh, this source I primary this is the steady quasi steady state value of the primary side current averaged over one switching cycle so this one is 
this whole equation number one equation number one is on one complete grid cycle okay and this equation number two represents the balance on one switching cycle so because you're switching you switch at uh, you know a much larger frequency than that of a grid so we have this equation number one and equation number two now based on you know these equations as i have said we have the equation number one that represents the power balance uh, into a, a, a over a one grid cycle uh, we assume that there are all the devices are lossless and equation number two presents the power balance for one switching cycle now we have these two equations because these two are different values so they don't match so normally what we do is this we use a decoupling capacitor here to cater for the power difference between these two quantities now based on the converter oper operating waveforms we have explained earlier we, ca we can you know th this is a long derivation i will explain later on we can have this i primary the primary current is equal to d square vpv over 2 lm fs now this is the this is the mean value this is not the peak value this is the average value uh, uh, across the primary winding the current uh, average value of the primary current now i will explain it later on how we have derived because this is uh, this is quite a general equation uh, the people who work with the flyback uh, you know topology they know it uh, very well so now we have to see that this if we call this equation number three and if we put equation number one and three in equation number two what we get is we will get the relationship for the due to cycle value so in this equation if we if we put this is this is uh, vpv into ipv is equal to i primary vpv now i primary vpv is i primary is equal to d square vpv over 2 times lmfs and here we have this vpv and we have this vpv and ipv here as well so now if you if you see here we have to put equation number this equation number one and equation number three in equation number two so we have this rms and i rms values from this equation number one this is equal to this value ipv and r ip and uh, vpv and this value will remain the same so what uh, what we will get is it will be i primary into v prime into into vpv is equal to uh, let me let me explain it again so we have to put equation number one and three in equa in equation number two two in equation number two so what is our equation number one equation number one was vpv into ipv this is your equation the first part of the equation right this is your first part of the equation i uh, i primary into vpv that is equal to two times vpv into ipv sine square of omega t so we are going to write it here that is equal to two times vpv into ipv sine of omega t. right now we have this since this is sorry this is i primary we have explained it in equation number three we will put this value here so vpv into d square vpv over two time lmfs is equal to two time vpv into ipv sine square of omega t. now if we further simplify this one this vpv this VPV it will cancel with this VPV and the solution for your duty cycle D is equal to it will be equal to 2 times square root LM 
into switching frequency this goes up into the IPV divided by the VPV and there comes your sign of now this relationship is very important when we deal with the control of a flyback inverter operating in a discontinuous conduction mode. This shows that this you know if, if we if we consider about this equation let us call it equation number 4. This equation number 4 tells us a lot of information. It tells us that the duty cycle D here, duty cycle D here it varies according to the rectified grid voltage while this one this this uh, this sine omega t this is what we have explained it here uh, in in this thing that we we have this vg which is rectified to get this type of waveform and we multiply it with the duty cycle d and this duty cycle d the amplitude of this waveform is solely controlled by two parameters which is this ipv and vpv governed by the amplicity of the technique therefore this amplitude is determined only by the ratio of the DC quantities coming from the photovoltaic panel. Therefore, in this case, a simple open loop scheme without any current feedback, we can use it. So, this makes it very simple to control a flyback inverter operating in a discontinuous conduction mode by using, uh, you know, an open loop uh, configuration for the control of uh, this inverter. Uh, thank you very much.